Commence primary ignition. I'm just not the, the hero type, clearly. What a piece of junk. Enterprise, this is the captain. I got a bad feeling about this. It's all part of the plan. Engage. Welcome back to Podcast Super One. I'm your host, Donovan Thompson, with my co-host, Daniel Wingfield. And today is episode 153 of Podcast 2 for 1, youtube.com slash 2 for 1 Studios, the best place to consume the content. And if you didn't know, and you probably didn't, we are sponsored by Kapow Comics, located at 4047 East Kill Avenue in Sherwood, Arkansas, where they have comic books, collectibles, graphic novels, and of course, special guest appearances throughout the year. Kapow. Did you say Kapow? I didn't come through on the mic for some reason that day. I did. Is my mic working okay? It is now. It, it, the Kapow okay. didn't come through. Kapow. There we go. Kapow. We need that Kapow in there. I, I can't yes. continue yes. the episode without it. Um, Daniel, mm. episode 153. And if you remember, listeners, from those who were with us from the beginning, episode one covered The Mandalorian, season one, episode one. Yep. And almost... Three and a half years later, we are getting season three of The Mandalorian. Yeah. Yeah. And so uh, if you guys remember, we had a season one, season two, relatively like a normal TV slate. And there was kind of a gap there, right? And we were kind of treated, some would say, some would not say, by the book of Bubba Vett. <laughs> and yeah. And then inside that was a episode called The Return of the Mandalorian that acted as a uh, basically season 2.5 between season right. two and what we see here in season three. Mm -hmm. And since then, we've also gotten Obi-Wan Kenobi, which I totally forgot about till like two days ago. We're, that's that's a show worthy of forgetting about. So that makes sense. Which is yeah. very heartbreaking. And then we also got the stellar Andor um, last year. Oh, yes. Yeah. One of the best shows on TV last year. Of course. And we've also had other smaller things like the Bad Batch. And we've also had Star Wars Visions, those kind mm. of things. Nothing on the movie front still, but we've been getting a lot of Star Wars TV, at least more than we've ever had, period. Right. So right. even though we've had some ups and downs in the Star Wars TV landscape, it's probably safe to say the best part of Book of Bubba Vett was that Mandalorian episode. At least to me, it was. Easily. Yes. Easily. Okay. Thank you. And then, you know, I think we could agree that season one and season two of Mando were pretty phenomenal. And the, especially the way e season two ended was pretty great. Mm -hmm. So I think going into season three here, Daniel, it's one of those things like it was coming. I wasn't just like super stoked or excited for it. It was just like, it's like, it was like when you go to a restaurant, one of your favorite restaurants and you're ordering a meal, and like you order your favorite thing, like, you know, it's going to be good. Right. And you don't like, you're not really surprised by it. You get it. It's like, it's how you ordered it. Right? So this is, oh, this is good. This is whatever. So like, that's kind of how this was for me. It's like, okay, it's, mm. this is this week. I'm going to watch Mandalorian. I'm not just like super excited. I think part of that is because of some of the decisions they made with Book of Bubba Vett. Um, but overall, watching the episode, it looks great. It is always fun seeing Mando and seeing baby Grogu. And, you know, this new Patheron, now I have maybe some issues with the Patheron or how we're getting there, whatever. But I think just as a piece of Star Wars entertainment, I mean, it's fun. It's Star Wars. It's good. The visual effects are good. I mean, it's all it's all it's all good. Um, so I enjoyed it. I mean, I'm in. I was in before hmm. anything ever was announced ever, period. So. What's your thoughts on it? And then we'll kind of get into a little bit of the nitty gritty of why maybe yep. I'm not as excited as I should be mm. or maybe what can make me excited in the future. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So um, I, I, I think I was kind of in a similar place coming into this season where the Star Wars universe is not that exciting to me right now. And it's sad, but it's true. And um, the only thing that's been good is stuff that's located in the past flashback, basically like um, stories and while those are good, it's still, there's nothing new that the universe is doing that makes me want to see, get invested into it, like care about it. You know what I mean? Um, and so I think I'm coming into that with a little bit of that. And I think also, I think while, while those, that, that episode in Book of Boba Fett was the best episode of that show, it was also maybe the most uninteresting choice they've made with Grogu and Mando at, at to this point in terms of just storytelling. Um, where Absolutely. 
the first two seasons of Mandalorian are all about the child and what's his destiny. Where does he come from? Where is he going to go? What's he going to do? Um, and that, you know, we get some, so, somewhat of an end to that, I guess, or like, um, not, not even a conclusion. We, we make a lot of progress on that for those first two seasons into going with Luke. And then it kind of just seems like his story's over. Right. And now he's just the cute tag along. And that's what I felt like in this first episode that like, and maybe that's okay. I, I, this is, you know, it's, it's somewhat of a critique, but it doesn't necessarily mean a deal breaker. But, you know, the show feels, uh, I don't know, there, maybe there's just a less sense of urgency about the show to me at this point. I thought, I thought for one, this episode, to me, it's only 30 minutes. And I felt like there was some long scenes that didn't matter <laughs> to, to a degree. You know what I mean? Like I, opening the show with an eight minute scene, which is, 90% of I I assumed that was baby Mando at first fighting the like being I did too. which I think was on purpose and I think that it was, was a nice for me a nice misdirect it's like oh okay. it was it was a nice misdirect but when your episode's 30 minutes and you spend a fourth of it on that opening scene that I don't know that felt a little bit like um stretching too little story over too much time kind of thing. And I felt that way a little bit with like the pirates. I did not like the pirates in this episode. They were like, for one in the dog fight, they literally says a vast, <laughs> like he's a pirate. And I said, no, that's, I don't like that in star Wars. Do your own version of pirates. Don't have space pirates acting like pirates from our universe, which is apparently millions of years in the future. Just a little immersion break. But also they're like, we want to drink in this school. And he's like, it's not a it's not a bar, it's a school. And like, we're still gonna drink here. Like, why? There's no alcohol there. Like, what <laughs> what are you going I agree. to do? You know, it's just like what? <laughs> you know what I mean? And it's it is just like we had this long, like, yeah. you know, uh Mexican really long standoff stand scene. Yeah, long. That's yeah. just like you know, more and more the show still it feels like it's for kids more and more, almost. And maybe that's you know, that's what George Lucas always said. It's it's always been for kids, but like I don't know. There's just, there's, there were so many cartoonish moments in this episode, like even the space pirate. <laughs> and he's like, give me your ship. And then he just zooms past him. I don't know. There was just, I wanted to this season to have a sense of urgency about it, to be like, we've got a really cool ass story to tell and we need to get going to get there because there's so much good stuff to get to kind of thing. You know what I mean? Yeah. Um, and that is not what this felt like. This felt like um, there's one kind of main plot to the whole thing, which is just Dindrin getting redemption. Um, but then we spend a lot of the episode with things that have nothing to do with that journey for him. You know what I mean? Where it's like, he's like, I have to do this. And then he goes to this planet and then he's trying to fix a droid. And it's just like, I don't know. It just, to me, it just is like, he's easily distracted. <laughs> It feels like maybe. Yeah. I mean, uh, I think you're hitting the the nail on the head here. And, you know, I've had conversations with a lot of people about this show. And I'm going to bring up Matt here for a second. You know, I think this was Matt did love Book of Bubba Vett, first of all. Like Bubba Vett's mm. his favorite Star Wars character. And um, talking to him about the Mandalorian, not this season, but just in the past, mm -hmm. the thing that he's always really liked about it was that it, from what I understand is that he's like these standalone na natures of these episodes, like they're adventures, they're serials mm. and that they, he doesn't really care so much about the overall narrative or arc. And I think like, that's where I differ a little bit on this. Like, of yeah. course I do love stuff like the opening scene where Mando comes in on that sweet ass new vehicle he got from Bubba Vett or yeah. during the show Bubba Vett. I love how the show, the episode ends with a cool dog fight, those kind of things. But that stuff ultimately matters to me because there's a, those are tied to a narrative through line. That's like, we're following this. That's why it's like the old adage I've talked to you about in private and to everyone else in public, like action is the best when it's enforced by narrative. Like that opening yes. sequence, it what what does it tell us? It tells us okay, they're trying to rebuild with like the foundlings and like there's the culture and there. This is however many, um, you know, uh, Mandalorians are in this tribe still. It also says but they others, don't do their research because why would you be doing this like 
baptism ceremony in a place where like giant crocodile turtles live. Uh, sure. I, I, yeah. I just that, that, that was, like that was a little like I don't know. The Mandalorians are usually smarter than that. Just to like yeah. they, a lot of them but, died. Like that it did, end, but like, yeah, it did. And like, in the, but the big my big point here is that like while cool, and I do. I mean, I can't. Even though I'm critiquing it, I can't deny seeing him fly in. And then when the, yeah. the pot opened up, his music kicked in. I was like, oh, fuck yeah, baby, Mando's back. Like, I mean, I love yeah. that. Yeah. But still, by the end of the episode, it's kind of like, well, that's it didn't really it did nothing for the story. It was cool. Yeah. I love it and I appreciate it. It makes me sure. honestly saying this kind of shit hurts me because I I never <laughs> thought I'd become this kind of person, Daniel. Um, <laughs> but I just I, I you know, I, I think like. Our, one of our big complaints with the episode of Bubba Vett was one, it was really weird to have it in the middle of his show. It had nothing to do with, you know, it was just like, I guess either there was always rumors like, Oh, they did this to make the ratings go up. I'm like, they shot this before the show ever come out. Like you're dumb people. This yeah. wasn't a reaction to Bubba Vett not doing well. That was always the plan. And it was just a really poor way of doing it. it took away from the, you know, the spotlight of Bubba Vett. And then also it's like, people have to be a little confused who didn't watch that show starting season three. It's like, well, wait a minute. The last thing we saw was him going off with Luke Skywalker. Like that's a really weird. Yes. You know, thing. And to be fair, job. we've, we've had these things in the MCU where it's like, there's people like us who absorb everything. Sure. We know everything. And then it's our, it's, it almost becomes our job to shepherd it for other people. Like, no, you got to go mm. watch this show so you can understand this. No, that's Thanos in that credit scene. He's got the gauntlet he's after. Like, who's that guy? That's like, I feel like that's become expected of the hardcore audience to kind of fill in the other audience, which I'm actually kind of somewhat getting against. Like I'm, mm. I'm tired of explaining to people the multiverse. It's like, no, you do your own homework, bro. You know, yeah, I say sure. that I, I, I do like it, but I think that's, that's an issue. And I think the the big thing, it's just, you're right. They were building towards him trying to get, to find this, you know, Grogu a new home, like to give away the family. And he ended up becoming a surrogate father and he gives him Luke right. Skywalker. And then it's like immediately they can't be apart from each other. And Grogu, pick, first of all, Luke gives him a decision that is very un Luke like. Mm. Like you either be a Jedi or you be a Mandalorian. You have to choose. Right. And Luke, I don't think the Luke that we've seen in episode one, two, and three would do, or sorry, three, four, four, five, six would have done that. Hmm. The Luke maybe we've seen in Last Jedi would have done that. So maybe that, you know, sure. which which also seems problem, which is also problematic. But it's like I don't know, just really weird decisions. And then now it's like I felt the show was building up to Man the Mando Din Djarin like taking off his helmet and it's like, well, we're right. immediately reversing that decision. So we immediately give him Grogu back and like, no, the, the growth I've felt is, you know, I guess that's what it is. I'm pushing it down. And it's like what this show could have been was season three could have been like Mando deciding, okay, the helmet's off either his group of people going after him. And like, he's a, you know, like a, someone who's not part of the group anymore. Either they're going to, they're going to kill him for it which also shows again how much of a cult they are him uniting people to, to get out with the yeah. dark saber to Mandalore. And then throughout the season, you see baby or Grogu being trained by Luke. Like you don't have to have them together in every scene. Like, is it fun and cute? A hundred percent, but yeah. not at the expense of the story that you could have told. And I, I thought when I, end of season two the balls on them to get to do that to bring luke in to give grogu away i was like holy shit what's season three gonna look like like not every season has to be the same you know and i think that the sky's the limit on there it's also weird to me it's like again i like the i like the show i like the episode yeah. i'm i can't wait for episode two but it's like you have bo katan on the throne si sitting by herself in this empty place and he's like why aren't you doing the thing you're going to do. She's like, well, everyone left me because you have the dark saber. It's like, that's a really weird thing to say to us. Like it's, it wasn't shown at all. It was told to us. No, well, that's the thing with this. Uh, that was the other thing that I didn't like about this episode is that what was Din doing? He was just flying to three different planets and having three different conversations. That was the meat of this episode. That was what happened plot wise. Yes. We had yeah. a cool dog fight in space. That was cool. 
uh, you know, reminiscent of the Django Fett battle with uh, Obi Wan in sure. the asteroid field right. in episode two. Yeah. Um. But yeah, he just he just he goes to a planet, has a conversation where they're just exposit like like using it as exposition for plot. You know. Oh yeah. yeah well, we've done this and that, or like, what are you gonna do now? Why are you gonna do that? Like this this kind of stuff that just is it's like my i i hear you i think there is definitely a different version where where we don't do that with baby yoda and that's a better story but if you're gonna tell this story episode one should have ended with him stepping onto mandalore and like having this like grotesque scene and like all this mystery and like maybe seeing danger maybe he can getting attacked i don't know like that's that's the sense of urgency of like, we've got a cool ass story and we're like going to get you right into it. You know what I mean? And when the episode is 30 minutes long, which is a short ass episode feels like, and all that happens is conversations and a few meaningless fights with characters that, yeah, I'm sure those pirate guys are going to show up later because yes. they did too much work designing them and giving them like good actors <laughs> to like not use them sure. again. You know what I mean? But it, it, it's like, I don't know. Like it just feels meandering almost. It just like uh, no sense of urgency is the best thing I can, I can think of right now to, to, to describe it. And I feel like that, that worries me for the rest of the season. You know what I mean? Well, it, How many more no, 100%. are we going to have where it's like, wow, like, yeah, that was shot. Well, yeah, that was a good costume or whatever, but like it did nothing to keep me going into like, it doesn't connect me more to the characters. You know, like none of these scenes with Din and these other characters made me like understand them better or feel closer to them. Like it just felt like we were just doing like a, let's remind the audience all of the main characters we used to have. Like he just used to have one conversation with each. Yeah. Um, I don't know. Well, no, I mean, here's an interesting thing is like a couple things. One, it, it felt like this episode was like, okay, we're going back to basics, right? We're meeting characters that we've seen from the first season Carl Weathers character being one um, grief, I think grief. And then like, we're also going to get IG eight, IG 11 back or is it IG 88? I can't remember. No, um, the bounty hunter. Yep. Okay. Then 11, 11 back, which is also kind of like, he needs a droid he can trust. And it's like, okay, I get that. Yeah. And then, but then like, as soon as he gets, the, it's cool. Omar is a Terminator, by the way, it was like straight up the Terminator, but which I liked, but it's like, okay, he's not functioning properly. And then one of the uh, Baba Frick dudes, yeah. which are cute, they're like, yeah, his memory core is messed up. And it's like, you know, it won't be the same droid, even if we can fix it. It's like, well, then just get a different, at that point, get a different droid. Yeah, and we need a one five that- minute scene of them going back and forth to explain that specific, like that whole scene is like, that's the, that could have, like, that's the thing. The opening scene, fine. It could have been three minutes, not eight and it's just yeah. as effective, even more effective. The battle with the pirates that could have been stripped down by half or more, and it still is. It still accomplishes what the scene accomplishes. Like there's nothing lost in it. This scene with the droid could have been a minute. You know what I mean? And it just feels like, um, yeah, it's, it's wasted just like, real estate. I mean, again, it's yeah, and then you've only got thirty it, minutes, yeah. and you're doing this in the first episode. That is not a. That's a red flag. To me. Yeah, I mean, again, and they had it took time to explain what Cara Dune was because of Gina Car- Gina Carano's um, yeah. firing. It's like they you know, went they, back it, to all the things that like fans liked, and just like instead of doing anything new, hey, let's go to this. Fans like this. Hey, let's remember this yeah. character. Fans like that. Again, I mean, I, they're 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 giving us entertain. Like, I mean, I think all the scenes we got were very star. Like, I mean, the Baba Frick is very yes. Star Wars humor. The opening yep. is incredible for a t- for even a Star Wars movie. The opening was like really fun and good. And, and we're getting this on a Disney Plus streaming service. Like, you know, and the thing is, you know, maybe we're being a little too harsh on it, and like we're, but I just think like I don't know. I want a story that every second matters. And then also like it's pushing our characters and our narrative. It's okay to deviate sometimes, but this is the first episode in the season. You, you, and like they did set up like his goal. He wants to go bathe into the waters of Mandalore. But again, it feels like a regression to his arc that he was going on episode one and two or season one and two. So I feel like it's already the path we're on. Obviously we're still on the path we were on. Like, I still think by the end of this, he will have come he will have come around. It's just like, it, it felt like we, we took a, we took two steps forward and then another step back, you know? 
And yeah, it's like, I mean, it, 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 and maybe this is the issue with the format, right? You've got this like masked character, which I, 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 I never anticipated him to be mostly with the helmet off just because I didn't think they could afford Pedro Pascal to be on set that much with his busy schedule. <laughs> like, I mean, like Pedro Pascal is rarely on set. He does all his voice lines in probably a couple of days. You know what I mean? Like it's not a yeah. demanding job for him. Um, and, and so, but yeah, I, I think like when you think about what are the stakes for the season, I mean, it's like Mando being accepted with his tribe again, but I don't, and I feel like, like you, it's like, I don't really care that he's accepted with his tribe again. That's no, he was, to me, the tribe is flawed. The show, yeah. And that flawed. Was just, yeah. And you're like, it's, it's like, he's going back to where he began at the beginning of the show as a character. That's what he's trying to go back to. And maybe they'll do this brilliant job of like deconstructing that desire. But when you've got a character in a mask that gives short, quick answers, you can't see his eyes. Like, it is harder to do like deeper emotional character work with that kind of character. And so, yeah, it's just this weird thing of like, I, they are kind of trapped in a hard place, uh, you know, rock in a hard place because like they can't tell an Andor like story with Din Djarin with his helmet on. I, I just don't think you can do that. That's just yeah. not, it's not going to work. And so you do kind of have to keep things almost more, a little cartoonish a little like on the surface and stuff but i still think there's a way to do that and still be cool ass shit and like even like think about like the clone wars like show like there's there's many episodes that are not character driven episodes that are still fucking amazing you know whether they're building out the war lore or they're just doing something really cool and focusing on like a really interesting like side story yeah i think you know I want to like it too. Like I want to be glued to the screen for Din Djarin. I mean, the Mandalorian, I know for both of us was something that got us back into star Wars. It is. I mean, yeah. We were pretty. It started out. this podcast three and yeah, a half exactly. years ago. Exactly. And I think, you know, the star Wars universe it just feels a bit like a mess right now. And this feels like, a, like they just don't yeah. know what they're trying to do or where they're trying to go or how to do it. Yeah. I mean, yeah, I, 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 just, I feel like it's different. A couple, sorry, I think it's a couple of, couple of different things. I think part of it is they, they know they still have a goal. Like we're in the minority, probably, right? There's probably more Matts than there is Donovan and Daniels, and sure. I think that they, they understand the Golden Goose they have, and Baby Yoda is still like the best thing that happened to the IP of Star Wars, like financially, probably ever. Right. And so, you know, I think it's a, it's a combination of, of that, and, and probably the, the even though I thought they were it seemed like they were never afraid to kind of do some cool ideas i guess the fear of kind of regressing back to what works and then also i you know got to keep in mind we do have dave filoni with the soka coming out later this year right and or season two happening i mean there are good things happening and this is all and, Favreau. Is it, and i do feel like Favro is a good director but he's a safe director like a safe writer like that. That's yeah. I, I don't, I don't think he's ever going to tell anything that takes a lot of risks, but he's going to do something that makes money and works. Yeah. I think Ahsoka will be more of, I just, I, I Filoni, I trust, you know, for the most part. And I yeah. feel like he's going to be pushing. There was a cool thing in this, the well scene, like that already to me feels like that Filoni a- is, is gearing up for like planting things in like the live action audience's mind about Ahsoka and Ezra, bridge bridger and yeah. all them because the last time we saw ezra which is a, a jedi in the um rebels, rebels. tv show with yeah. ahsoka and all them was he was on these wells that were traveling with thon with thron and so we saw those that's the first time we've seen them somewhat in live action so i think right we're teeing up some things like that and that's, that's the, again that is still the end game here is but bavette doing his thing mando yes. either getting his claim to mandalore or Bubba vet getting the claim to mandalore ahsoka and thrawn and ezra to me that is still the end game for all this stuff sure but i still want these stories to be focused and on character and not to be regressing an interesting thing that favro said in interviews this last week that kind of set the internet a storm i think you you may have seen this but apparently season one two and then up to now season three it's been happening almost in real time like baby yoda was with luke for like a year or so training a year and a half mm. 
it does not feel that way at all to me. It feels like it was a couple weeks max. You what know was, what I'm saying? What was the man? What was Dan doing in that year? <laughs> well, yeah. Well, part of it too is like, yeah. What was he doing? Like, was he not just? It was he. So he wasn't trying to become part back part yeah, of the he's tribe, being a bounty hunter or just chilling. I mean, like, what he he had already been had he been banned from the tribe at that point? Yeah, I mean, like, well, I'm not sure that, but oh, well, the episode picks up where he goes back right, and he has the dark saber, and oh. she's like. That it gets banned during the episode that he gets Grogu, right? I think so. It gets back like the beginning of the episode opens with him battling the other dude. Yeah, yeah, John Favreau's character, I believe. So yeah, point. he's just okay. But he's still, just... but yeah, it's but it, it doesn't feel that way to me at all, and it feels like, from what I understand, it's, it's apparently season one, two, Book of Vet, all that happened in like a two and a half year time span. I'm like, really? Like that happened that long? Like that's crazy. Like how long was fucking Finnick and? mando on tatooine right. you know like do yeah. you know what i'm saying like in their episode were they on there for months in the desert you know what i mean like it's just i don't know sure. it's just it feels kind of weird and, and fabro said like well we have 30 years right between return of the jedi and um force awakens so we have 30 years of story so that's a you know we're we're running out of time not running we have a lot of story to tell still a lot of story so like this is we're not even it feels like to the halfway point of mando's story which to me i'm like yeah i don't know I mean, I you think they'll like, milk this pretty dry at this point. I'm not. I'm it not, feels like it kind of now, based on their decisions yeah. with bringing Yoda or Baby Yoda back and everything else. I, I'm I'm curious. Last bit of little news here mm. is this year's the 40th anniversary of Return of the Jedi for one. 40 years Return of the Jedi. Wow. Um, and uh, this year also we have Star Wars celebration, I believe, in London this year. Mm. And um apparently last time they were in London, they didn't have any big announcements. and It was like a big sticking point. And mm. now that Bob Iger is back, the rumors have been circulating that this year at Star Wars Celebration, we're going to get a lot of movie announcements, particularly because there was rumor that David Lindloff is writing his own trilogy, which is mm. the guy he's, he's in a lot of things, you know, Lindloff lost, but he, he did Watchmen recently. Yeah, um, he did, and he did leftovers. A, he's he's he did yeah. His loss is like kind of what rocketed him, rocketed him yeah. to like notoriety. But yeah, no, he's done a lot. He's got some misses and like some of the critic critical eyes, but then he also has some really big bangers. So he's kind of just you know yeah yeah wh- wherever he's good but, at telling like kind of thrilling shows, you know, edgy yeah. like mystery box shows kind of yeah yeah exactly, yeah. which yeah. is kind of what failed Star Wars last time around in the movies, but um. Anyway, I suspect we're going to get some movie information, you know, here pretty soon. So in, in at least in May ish time period that will kind of give us some more direction of kind of the the yeah. future. Right. We have the Acolyte coming out sometime, which is like a prequel about the Sis. Right. The Sis. Um, Mandalorian. Is there the that, that might be Palpatine, young Palpatine? Maybe or like a Cad Bane, not Cad Bane or a uh, Darth Plagueis. Plagueis, yeah, Plagueis, and there's a few of them, but gotcha. um, I'm trying to think of, uh, not Plagueis, Darth, I mean, it's Darth Bane I'm thinking of. I said Cad Bane, but um, yeah. anyway, yeah, I mean, I don't know. I, I'm I'm curious. I'm still excited about the show. I mean, yeah, the, the apparently reviewers got the first two episodes. I think they should have dropped two episodes. Like, I get they want to milk every mm-hmm. week of, like, right. viewership, but if, that, if that's the case, like, make another episode. You know what I'm saying? Give us two yeah. in the beginning. Especially if they're if they're this short and that kind of light on, yeah. um, on plot. Yeah. Last thing I'll say is I I did I love the design of the pi- like the main bad guy pirate. I was like, okay, this yeah. guy looks like a he looks like a swamp thing Star Wars character. Uh-huh. And I was kind of like, man, this guy looks like a cool bad guy that's not like tied to some imperial thing. He's just kind of like a yeah, you know, like a new a new bad that's that that kind of fits the right. western kind of you know vibe and pirate vibe that kind of stuff. So I really dug that. I dug obviously the fight scenes. Um, Grogu always brings his acting chops hundred ten percent. Right, I like all that stuff. I just kind of hope that they give us some more of the the meat and potatoes, like the, the episodes where Bubba Vett yeah. come down and you know Grogu's reaching out to some Jedi and then you know stuff like that where we're getting like where we're salivating like who could show up like the Ahsoka right. episode last season. And then, yeah. you know, the last episode is like fucking amazing. You know what I'm saying? Stuff like that where we're kind of right. like, 
really just like nerding out on Star Wars and I'm hoping yes. that's kind of what happens, you know. Me too. Me too. I'm rooting for it. Me too. I'm still I'm still in, you know. I just Yeah, right. Exactly. Exactly. I just want to be in in. Like I want to be like I want to be thinking upset. about it. I want I want the episode to end and like me just be like in my brain just wanting to like keep staying there. You know what I mean? Like just keep thinking about it, keep speculating. Yeah, you want that like oh no, you know that 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 water cooler talk kind of moment which you need like intrigue and you know good storytelling to get so i'm hoping yeah they should have just had the that episode of in bubba vat that should have been the opener of this season and in this episode here yeah and then that would have it, been a much more compelling opening yeah and then just had mando helping bubba vat out towards the end of the season. Like he calls him and he helps him in the final fight you don't have baby yoda there like it, it distracted away from Boba Fett anyway. Have nothing, just yeah, just don't do it at all with Boba Fett. I mean, like it just just stop having Mando come. I mean, like I think the best version I agree. of Boba Fett has his own compelling story that's its own thing, and Mando doesn't really. Have no, I I hundred percent agree. Yeah, and um, I think that, I think that was a really poor decision. I still can't wrap my brain around it hundred percent, but I understand it from like a like it's convenient. For right, it's like it's convenient. It's like okay, let's just throw an episode in here to like move this character where we want them, so we can start season three how we want. You know what I mean? But it does. It it feels like it was a move made out of practicality, not out of inspiration. If that makes sense. Yeah. No. Hundred percent. Hundred percent. Daniel, how can our listeners write into us? Listeners, you can write into bit.ly slash two for one mail. Let us know what you thought of the first episode of The Mandalorian. Maybe I'm just way off. Maybe, you know, you just thought the space pirates wanting to drink at a school made a lot of sense. Maybe you have wanted to go to a school and drink and no one let you. And so that just like really, you identify connected. with that. They connected to this person. <laughs> so like, I feel the same way exactly always wanted to drink in a preschool classroom um but let us know bit.ly slash 241 mail and of course if you can't hit us up at our bitly you can always find us in the comment section below again youtube.com slash 241 studios the best place to consume the content of course you can find us on all podcast services like apple Podcasts, google podcasts and Spotify, and probably many, many more. Daniel, episode 153 of Podcast for One. I'm sure we'll be back relatively soon to A, finish up The Last of Us, um, hopefully with some special guests, and B, talk more Mandalorian. We have Shazam. We have Guardians of the Galaxy. We have all kinds of things coming out. Finally, uh, it feels like we had a small bit of a drought, but I think we're fixing to pick right. back up and actually be maybe somewhat annoyed we have to be watching so many different things. <laughs> Let's go. But but we'll see. Anyway, my name is Donovan Thompson. I'm Daniel Wingfield. And we have spoken. <laughs>